Welcome to our third Marie Claire virtual facial masterclass today. So I'm Lisa Oxenham, I'm the beauty and style director of Marie Claire. And today we have celebrity skincare specialist and makeup artist, Natalie Eleni, who will be directing makeup artist and skincare expert, Ruby Hammer, to create a matte glowing complexion using clay de peau beauté. So we also have Benjamin Kaufman, who is directing the whole of this concept. Um, A-list hair expert, Tyler Johnston, to direct Ruby's hairstyling and Sarah Barnes on production. So over to you, Natalie. Hi, everyone. Well, it's lovely to see you, Ruby. I know we get to see each other at events and things, and obviously we haven't had any events, so it's nice to see you virtually. Um, oh, I'm just going to pin you there so I can see your gorgeous face large on my camera. So, <laughs> yeah, you, we're going to do like a little skin prep together. And I know you are just a wealth of knowledge. So you're going to, I'm sure you're going to tell us some things that you like to do as well as we go along. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. That's, um, I don't know. It's reality, isn't it? I know my post came before and had to just keep, keep quickly running in and out. <laughs> We're all in the same position. Luckily, I my son's I do apologize. <laughs> I do apologize. Oh, yeah. No, I, I think going to say the last time I saw you was at the Claire de Poe at their yes. room in the Serbiton. So that was, it's yeah, very... Yeah. So it's connected, we're connected <laughs> again through the same brand. Um, so I think we're going to start doing um, a nice cleanse. And you, you've got the clarifying cleansing foam. And this has diamond, silk and pearl powder in it. So it's just really a nice way to, this works well on kind of combination, skin, um, if you find you're getting a bit congested with wearing masks and things, this is really lovely. Use something with a little bit of, um, something that's gonna to help to clarify the skin and just kind of really work it into the areas that you tend to get more congested. Don't need to do it obviously with a really firm pressure. If we, you know, if your skin's quite sensitive, you can just give her like a nice gentle kind of, cause it's kind of a slightly exfoliating as well as cleansing. And I tend to just keep adding water when I'm doing my cleansing so that I'm just not dragging on the skin. You've got amazing skin, Ruby. Oh, bless you, Natalie. You really uh, do. Yeah, I am. I'm being blessed with good genes, so I can't <laughs> take total um, credit for all of that. Sometimes people want to know what skincare you use, and then they think that's going to be what gives you that great skin. But no, I'm genetically blessed. Then I'm coming up to 60 next year. So you need to sort of... Take care, you have to take care. So, and once we're in this industry, you know that you have to um, pay attention to all of that. God, this feels lovely. It smells really nice because it's not overpowering. And it just prep your skin beautifully for the next products. Um, you know, like I'm sure when you prep people's skin for shoots and things, like the cleansing aspect is so important and getting the canvas right for putting the other makeups on. And I know like myself, you like a very like fresh, healthy look and also with your own makeup. Totally, totally. I think people don't realize when you're doing shows or when you're doing makeup on editorial or shoots or red carpet, how much time goes into the prep as much as actually not just using the cosmetics to mask things. If you don't have a good foundation, and I mean that as skin, and not just there, it has to be yeah. your neck and it has to be down depending on other bits of your skin that you're showing. We spend as much time doing the prep, don't we Natalie, as you would yeah. doing the makeup and then and then just a little bit of fine tuning. Yeah, it just brings all that hydration. It also relaxes um, your client. And I think people feel relaxed and even with yourself, if you take time, it just helps with your confidence. You feel relaxed. You feel slightly pampered. You just, it just, it's like a really nice feeling, well-being feeling, isn't it, as well? Totally. And also, while you are touching their face and you can, you can kind of nicely look at someone's features where you might need to moisturize a little bit more, what you can sort of examine them without sitting there staring at them in a horrible, awkward way. And... You can ask them, what do you do with your skincare? What do you think works for when we come to doing makeup? All that 
bit of info. Yeah, because you can kind of feel what kind of skin type they've got, what products would sit better, whether a cream or a powder. Um, what we're going to use next, I'm going to do this with you because I love this. Before so this I is go there, I was just going to yeah. say, Natalie, this has already brightened my skin yeah. and it feels velvet, velvet soft. Feels amazing. So that's lovely. Yeah. And Natalie, what were you saying about this cleanser? So it is really hydrating, isn't it? And it is. Um, well, this one, I mean, this one I would say is more for if you like oily combination skin, um, but also just great for giving a very, very gentle kind of like exfoliation to the skin. So kind of really brightening, um, helping to decongest. Um, and then what we're going to do afterwards is there's this beautiful, um, so I think you've got this as well. This is step two, the hydro softening lotion. And this is just like your first layer. So this is like your silk underwear, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> so I want to ask, yeah. should you pump it using your hands or should you use cotton wool? Well, I just very much use my hands, but you could use cotton wool if you wanted to. I'm, I'm just asking, because I prefer to use my hands because yeah. then I can feel the contour yeah, of my too. face and it can go everywhere. And then I always put it on my hands when I finished. And then this we can just press over the skin. It's like an instant, it's like a smoothie for your skin, instant. Oh, it smells lovely. And you can actually just start to massage with this because it's got enough slip to it. I might have put a little bit too much on because I'm so keen on using this thing, but let me just- And also we're gonna do some massage anyway with it, so. Okay. You can just sort of, because you do, you like doing massage, don't you, Ruby? I always do a bit of massage, but you know what? I wish I had been formally trained a bit more, you know, so that I'd know what I'm doing. So sometimes I just know my fingers are kind of gentle but firm. So you just do something that like keeps that lift going. But we were like to say with massage, it is very intuitive. You kind of feel. Like if you've got tension in your face, go to that area and work the tension out. If you feel like you've got a headache, you feel like you're frowning and then just lift and release the muscles and relax. So this is a really nice product to just do some lifting along the forehead. And it kind of really helps to open up the eyes as well. If, I, if I'm working with a client, I'll tend to stand behind them and just do some really nice sweeping upward movements, but you can do it yourself. Just kind of be really firm, even if you want with your kind of palms and. It's actually very soothing and it really lifts. I could go to sleep now and then that'll be the end of this. <laughs> Ruby, do you hold tension in your face at all? I think I do in my lower jawline where I might grind my teeth at night. And you know, when we are part of a crew and part of a team, you don't want to add drama in the situation. So I absorb a lot of it in me. And I think you probably just hold it in there not 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 like a martyr but it just means you're holding it somewhere and i think i tend to hold it in my jaw here what's so. quite nice though is we can just use use the size of your thumbs and just scoop from under the back of your jaw and then lifting up just to kind of really help to release and you can go quite firm and it might feel quite tender but that's just great for helping to relax so kind of just in front of the ear and scooping up you can see it feels painful and then it releases. Yes. Wow, nice. So Natalie, is this like a toner that you're just applying? Yeah, kind of a toner, but it's also like a, a, a layer of hydration. So it's not like um, a toner that you can like wipe off that right. you know, traditional, it's more like used to kind of add another layer of hydration. And I also just love, we were doing them before, like nice little raindrop movements can be really um, kind of quite powerful, even though very easy to do, especially around the eyes, feels really nice. And also it's just a nice way to massage your products in um, because it just kind of gets them absorbed so that you're not just putting layer over layer over layer. It just kind of gives, gives them a chance to really work them into your skin. I really love that. And this also, you could like just press this over. Once you've put your foundation on, if you wanted to, just throughout the day, you could put a few pumps on and just kind of press it, not massage it around, but just press it into your skin. It's really nice as well. And it's not greasy at all. And it means that as you're doing it, you can temper where 
I think I put a little bit too much on, but I loved it because I've spent time getting it absorbed and you can sense whether, oh, would it need, if you were a bit more delicate, you know, you'd use a little bit and then you could see I can add a bit more. And I love what you just said that you can use it on top of makeup as a freshen up, you know, after lunch, say, or it's quite late shoot or you just want to. You just, sometimes your skin feels like it needs something, doesn't it? Parched, it feels like it, yeah. <laughs> in a studio or if you're outside the, the elements or the central heating or whatever, you know, or you've too much coffee and you're dehydrated, all of that will help it just perk, perk up. It back up. Um, mm -hmm. Next, we've got the serum, which is a very special product. So this is step three, the serum. Um, and again, this is kind of a really nice, like gel water consistency, which is really lovely. And um, it just really helps to firm the skin. And again, it just applies beautifully. And you can, I'm just gonna put a little bit extra on than I normally would just cause we're gonna do some massage with it. Okay. Can even do a little bit of, um... again, this is one of those movements that's a bit like that. It can be quite hard to do, but it's <laughs> a nice jaw lifting. You can do it faster, you could do it slowly. Another nice way, easier way to do it is just to scoop your hands upwards. Oh, we can even do it like this. I can watch you and do it. Huh. I kind of just do it like this on myself because it's so you're just sliding one hand up. So if you take your yeah left hand and just slide upwards with your yeah, just literally working upwards. So Natalie, you were saying upwards for lifting and downwards for lymph drainage. Yeah, so upwards if and with a firm pressure for lifting. So prayer movement's another really nice one. And then if you're working just more on the lymph, it's much more superficial and it's much more gentle and you would work outwards, then you can drain down, down the neck and then just do some light pressure points. And that just really helps to encourage lymphatic drainage. So people get sometimes confused thinking, why am I doing this? I should be lifting up. If you're doing a firm pressure and lifting, then you're going up. But if you're just doing some lymphatic drainage, I tend to just use my fingertips and you can just press down the sides of the neck as well. And that'll just really help to encourage. And it's actually really quite powerful lymphatic drainage. You can almost feel, especially if you've got a cold or congestion, you can almost feel things loosening. So just some nice lymph movements could be around the eye, just with like fingertips, very gentle, like feather-like pressure to the temples. You could do that a few times. And then my god this is very zen i've already calmed down you know like i'm 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 almost not thinking i'm in front of a camera with other people watching me i'm no, just I've been, to your voice. Quite, I've been doing quite a few of these zoom facials with people actually all around the world because <laughs> you can actually do an awful lot yourself to yourself especially as we can't get to anybody yeah you know now that's lovely I'm draining down the neck I might just do some lifting. So I'm going to use my ring finger and just go in between my nose, either side, and then lift, lift right up, sort of scoop under the brow. Is this okay to do if you've got very oily skin, Natalie? What, the massage? Uh, yeah, I mean, you're, it's more, I mean, you could change the medium in which you're, that you're using for, so obviously, use something suited to your skin type but yeah massage is it's fine especially I mean if you had very active acne you wouldn't want to be kind of massaging everything around but for something like around the eyes you know it's just something you can do to perk up the eye area even throughout the day even I mean I've got mascara on and I'm still doing this it's more just to kind of release any tension but I find that when I'm doing makeup or any or prepping skin, if you just do some nice lifting around the brow, you can really see a difference straight away. Look, you just it just wakes you up. Yeah. God, you you are reinforcing what I do naturally without knowing what the heck I'm doing. So it just what people do and how it feels, and I think that's what you should emulate. You know, just get a great product, which these are. And then 
emulate and going like, you know, you do do upwards, one downwards, and then just as long as you're not dragging and the skin can't be too dry when you are you are pulling, you need something on there. And then... Um, Ruby, do you think you would put this into your sort of morning routine then? Because you say that routine is massively important to you and it's sort of key. No, I'm always asked, what do you do? You've got great skin. What do you do? What do you do as an artist? What are the products you use? For me, it's it doesn't matter... And I don't mean that disrespectfully to Claire Depo, they are amazing products. So the best products you can get will make it work and you get even better results, but just do something. So, you know, everyone needs to cleanse, everyone needs to hydrate, everyone needs to moisturize. And then, you know, as you're getting older, I would introduce a serum, an eye cream, whatever you do, but all these movements, Natalie has just shown us what you do with it. Look, I'm already looking perkier than I looked when I sat down at the beginning of this. So it, it is testimony and you, don't, you can't just do it once. You've got to keep on doing it and every morning or do it at the end of the day if that's where time you've got. Just do it with time and with a bit of awareness. Love. And a bit of love as well, a bit of self-love. <laughs> a bit of self-love. And, and this is the time as a woman or as a person you, you can look at your face and really examine what do I need? Is it going, is it, is it, oh my God, what's happened here? Or wow, I've been eating well and it's shown. If we've been on holiday and you've got a little bit of sun, oh my God, that's helped. So you're able to assess the condition of this massive organ that we have, skin. You can, you can address that and you can't do that if you don't look at it and do it on a regular basis. So yes, every day or every evening or every other day, but do it. And what, like you say, it's such a great tip, whatever products you've got, just it's like creating a routine, isn't it? And a habit and just something, whether it be a long regime or, you know, you've got two minutes, just it's like doing it every day, like, you know, cleansing your skin and just giving yourself that time because it's a lot harder to, if you don't do anything and then you feel, don't feel confident in your skin. And it's, it's a lot easier to do a little bit every day to keep it healthy and bright and uh, you can make an incredible difference and you know it's not about just having like an Instagram filter face it's about just having beautiful fresh skin that looks healthy whatever age you are whatever skin type you've got and um, and I think that's really important because I think a lot of the time we look at Instagram and everything's so filtered it's not real life <laughs> and um, you know and that can make people feel conscious but you know it's just about having being health, having a healthy looking skin and showing your natural beauty, not trying to cover everything up. Can I just ask as well about, um, just while we're on the topic of uh, routines, Ruby, about your supplement routine as well, because I know you've been doing that for the last 10 years. And it's well, not even 10 years, as long as I can, you know, as long as I was aware, I then added it. And you know, you gain more knowledge, it's like everything else. You're a yoga practitioner you don't just do what you did when you first learned it, it grows like everything the more knowledge you learn about something the more you apply to yourself information you get admiring inspiring all of that it's all wonderful so I know that just doing it on the external is not going to be the only thing you do you do have to take care of getting your sleep some protection and supplements and for me I think as I've gotten older I've always think zinc vitamin C, I'm at the tail end of menopause, so collagen, anything that boosts those up internally, omegas, and that will make all of this work better. So you've got a slightly plumper, more resilient skin mm -hmm. and using a good skincare products with it can only bolster that up. It will just be the icing on the cake. Yeah. Um, but it's like you wouldn't dream of not brushing your teeth every day. So I don't know why people need to be told, have a skincare regime in place. It's, it's almost as simple as that. Mm -hmm. And you're a great advertisement for all of that. <laughs> well, so I mean, you're inspiring. <laughs> I'm sure you're inspiring good, lots of people. Good. I'm, I'm saying it. I was about about my late twenties when I would buy and, you know, when I first started as an assistant, I couldn't afford anything really. And, but I've always used an eye cream that people used to laugh at me then. And I said, well, I don't want to get to 60 and realize that's what I should have done. So thank God expensive. And as we become 
better known and people send us nicer products. I've always used something. And I think I'm testimony to that little and often. You can fall off the wagon occasionally. It's not a problem, but it means it's very hard to make something really amazing on a binge, you know, like I've got to do everything. It takes longer. Whereas if you've maintained something, it's easy. You can just add a few tweaks here and there. And even if you fall off the wagon occasionally, it's no harm done. Mm -hmm. I think we are now coming to the foundation part. So it'd be lovely to like watch you. So that, well, this is step um, four and it's the uh, radiant fluid foundation mat. I think that's the one that you're using. And so it'd be nice to see how you apply your foundation, how you like to, we were discussing before, you saying you quite like fingers and a light brush because you like a very sort of natural finish. So it'd be nice to see I, how you apply it and what tips you can I, I was so pleased when they've extended that range of the foundation because it is fantastic Japanese technology. And, you know, I, I had it in my kit for the concealers forever. And then when the foundation has come, I think, God, I've got something I can personally use as a woman, it's great. So I do love using these digits. I do like a brush and I do like a sponge. But since we've got such beautiful, you know, you've stepped me through this lovely, and my skin looks radiant, only a touch, I'm literally gonna do one pump in my hand, I'm going to use my fingers. I go in the center and work out. And you can then realize that lovely prep that Natalie has just done on me it looks, it feels amazing. So it just literally melts. The foundation melts and I don't want lots of it. I'm using it like I'd use a moisturizer. And I am going downwards just to keep the hairs because I've got pesky little baby hairs and I want them to look polished and not, um, you know, going this way and that way. Just gently putting that in. It's very mesmerizing watching. It's just like, oh, it's hypnotic. We were saying it's very relaxing watching people do their makeup. And you can see, I've still got tons left on my hands. And I do take it into my eyelid all the way down to the most of it, anyone, I think it's the cover is there and you work out unless you've got acne or you're broken out or something. And then I just use my fingers like a moisturizer to almost work that in because I like a natural feel on me personally. Lots of times I just get away with a concealer, but this is such a lovely foundation. Looks gorgeous. And with the skincare, look, you tell me, because I'm not being objective. I think even with my pesky, I have a bit of pigmentation usually on this bit and it, it's, it's from, mask acne or just hormonal, it's always there. And you can see even without, I'll just go over on that one. So it would need a concealer, but on that really big mark. Otherwise, see, cause I've gone in the inner dark corners on my lid around, around. And then my little trick, I'm gonna wipe off my hands now cause I've got it in my hands and I don't want it going anywhere else. I would then, you can either use a brush to buff it out because you're not adding any more product. It's a clean brush. And you thin what it out. What type of brush is that, Ruby? Huh? What type of brush is that? Is that a foundation it brush? Is, it's a foundation brush. And Claire de Pau have two. They have one for a denser cover. So you can give yourself more cover if you need it. And this one is for a light lightweight cover so I could have used that but I think look how easy it is to use with your fingers and I've just cleaned my hands off because look so that look how much is still left on there and it was a tiny pump little pump I thought I don't want any more on my hands there and that is that's lovely and also how it feels it doesn't feel heavy and do I look like I've got tons on I don't think no, so just, no you just look 
it just looks glowing and fresh and lovely. Yeah, um, it looks how it should be. This is, your, this is how a base should be. I've just brushed up my brows because I can look. Look how nice that is. And is that foundation layerable as well? Can you build it up to sort yeah, of make it? I think it's a mid cover one and it's an it's a matte matte one, but don't get scared by the word matte because sometimes you need it's just a texture because you can add a bit of sheen, but you know, you can put that bit of serum or that essence to just tap in here if you want to after the makeup is on there as a fine tuning to put a bit of a glow but it's definitely buildable. And I always think a nice thin layer is the best thing you need. Not all over, but I've done it all over because it looks like my skin, but better. I feel like Alicia Keys here, you know, that, <laughs> that sort of look. And you can tap on because unfortunately, it may be the time of the month, it may be mask, acne, it could be whatever. And you just go over the bits you need again, another thin layer another thin layer build it up build up many layers as natalie knows but thin and not just unthinkingly slapping it on and that's the key to making it last as well i, I genuinely think that little and often and then just keep looking and if you need a bit more with confidence go for it the only thing i would do is if you've got quite a lot of thick base here is this is my little trick is Keep, rub your nose again like that because when it's not on there look it looks like there's no fun you, you look like it's a trick that it means people look straight in there and they don't see foundation or product on there it feels like your skin is gorgeous they don't, don't think you've got makeup on and I have got it on top tip love that <laughs> matte foundation but it looks it's given sort of a glow still look, it can turn glowy, yeah beautiful beautiful and matte means it won't budge and it's great for the zooms it's great for the selfies and if you were in a hot country or you know it, it just it just means it won't it won't move yeah which is lovely lovely and we're doing step five now which is um lipstick in uh, lipstick cashmere in legend well this is the legend look at that and i like a bit of red don't i i love <laughs> signature ruby red so thank you claire de Poe. and it's a brand new lipstick it is really beautiful look at that you almost all... don't want to use it because no, it I, don't want to use it. I don't want to use it but shall i just go for it go for it <laughs> So because it's a red like that and people think, oh, should I use a pencil? Should I use a brush? You can. But I think one of the most modern, nice ways is straight from the bullet. Is that, is, isn't that right? Yeah? yeah. There you go. So I, I won't talk as much now. <laughs> yeah, I like to just apply it straight and then I just use my fingers to kind of buff it Ooh. in. So I normally, because I've got a little mirror here, just because of my eyes, I'm drop it right in the middle to see how that looks and then I'm going to take it I think there's going to be lots and lots of red lipstick worn this Christmas don't you I think I do love a red lipstick it just yeah, it does make nothing you like it more alive You've kind of got to be in the mood for red lipstick though, I think. Yeah. I'm in the mood for red lipstick. <laughs> I could reply, but I'm doing these lips. I don't oh, make them wrong. Such a beautiful colour. I love it. It's, Have it's I gone over slightly? Yeah. But then I'm going to correct it. So after that's on with a bullet, I'm going to use my fingers, my ring finger, to just tap that on. Somebody's just asked why why wouldn't you use a lip liner? I would use a lip liner. So I'm lucky that my lips aren't, aren't super full, but they're not thin either. So a lip liner, even when I use it, I would use it after the lipstick because all I'm doing is to kind of maybe if your lips tilt down a little bit and it looks a bit sad, so I'd repair that. I would cheat in a bit of a pout on the lower lip, or you cheat in a bit more of a pout 
at your cupid's bow. So I love that to give it definition and keep it looking fresh and modern. So if we are on a editorial shoot or something, and I know I can't keep going in there. So for longevity, I also use a lip pencil, but, but the pigment in this particular lipstick, I'm looking in my mirror just to make sure I've done. It's so comforting and so wonderful. I don't think it needs it. And it looks modern. It looks it's really, it's really lovely because it's such a strong color. It really defines your lips as well. And then really work it round, you know. Mm. And is it like, it's like a matte uh, finish, isn't it? That one. It is because I think they've got a, a more shinier version. They've got quite a, quite a lot in this. This is like their iconic color I think that legend so but this is like although it says matte it's very comfortable really, really comfortable lovely. but That's it's not a really good description comfortable because sometimes matte can make, make your lips feel a bit bitty and dry can't it so I call it I know this sounds I don't know if I'm allowed to say it here but you don't want to look like a monkey's ass you know and it's all like like that you need it comfortable and you can talk you know move your mouth around. Yeah, lovely. And that looks, that looks good. And finally, what we're gonna do in your session today for step six is the perfect lash mascara. Okay, well, it's, it's actually right. Look, when you look at me like this, skin is glowing, lips look, got presence, don't need much on the eyebrow, but I think it would be finished off the little bit on the eyes, wouldn't it? Yeah. So, opening the mascara. Ruby, somebody's just asked what's your uh, makeup philosophy as well. So just have to think about that while we're doing this. Makeup philosophy is always, I say, accept yourself. So don't think of makeup in the negative way where it's always got to be to fix something that you perceive as wrong. Mm -hmm. I think for me, makeup is the most wonderful tool that has got transformative powers but also just use it in a positive way if you don't enjoy using it that joy is gone that experimenting that's copying a look of something I think all of that makeup helps us when when you're feeling a bit vulnerable you can mask it out so you can look like I look okay I haven't slept or I'm a new mom or I'm whatever it is it's a tool that you use to make your life better. That's all it is. And it should be, it's not rocket science, it's trial and error and a bit of experimentation. That, that's my, in a nutshell, that's what it is. If you don't have fun with it, it's a bit sad. <laughs> yeah. Shall I start using this? So I'm going to do my upper lashes first. So what I say is look down, and really get it to the base of the lashes and wriggle it up, straight up. And then I'm going to go into the outer corner and then I'm going to go in the inner corner. Did you have to take off some of the um, formula from the wand? Well, this when... is a, a new one that you've kindly sent me. So it doesn't have much on there. But if I was using it in my kit or using it with a disposable, you know, wand or anything like that, I would always, I keep a tissue and I tip the end just there so that, look, that bit of excess comes off it. So you're not clumping it and clogging it as you go along. And um, Natalie, while Ruby's doing this, could you just give us um, some tips on mascara as well, um, on how you use it? Well, I've always, it's one of my key products. I love mascara. So I like to sort of go for it with my mascara. Um, I like something that's gonna kind of really build length and volume. Um, I don't like it if it feels like bitty on my lashes though. So again, like Ruby, I would kind of take, you know, the, the end and just make sure that it wasn't really clumpy. Um, do kind of 
renew your mascara so I think some people can get a mascara and have it for like literally months and months and months and months and wonder why it dries out so you kind of do yeah. have to keep refreshing it because you are opening it and closing it um so you get the best out of it if you you know keep buying a new one and um yeah I like to just layer really and I don't really wait for one layer to dry before I put the next on because then I can find it's a bit difficult to apply the second layer I like to just kind of really build it up yeah. and spend a bit of time working into the inner corners accentuating the outer corners by using the tip to kind of wing and pull them out and um and I like to wear it on my bottom lashes as well but that's kind of personal if you find it you can get a bit smudgy underneath and go for a waterproof mascara or one that's kind of smudge proof mm -hmm. um yeah. And just check throughout the day, just use your fingers to pat under, just clean fingers, and then you can just pat under. Yeah. I did a little faux pas there. Do you see? You get a, I've smudged it because I blinked too quickly. But at the, any time you do that with a bit of mascara, you use a bit of, I'm going to use the essence here, just a squirt of it with my Q-tip and repair you see, you can just take off the excess. I think what people do is they try and get an eye makeup remover and it just blots it all off. This is not having a, my glasses on or my lenses on. But I think it's really good to just have like, you know, people worry they have to do everything perfect straight away, but every, you know, you can't always do everything perfect. Just get a Q-tip, get something, a tissue or whatever, or even a makeup brush, a clean makeup brush and just sweep under, um, you know, just, just, you know, using something with a small surface area, then you're not wipe, wiping all the makeup away underneath. Mm -hmm. That looks gorgeous. Yeah, really beautiful look. I love this look, Ruby. And I did put a little bit underneath and I think I did two good layers on the top like Natalie suggested because I think it needs it. It looks good. It, it's not going to look over the top, is it? Beautiful. Yeah, really beautiful. Okay. I absolutely love it. Great. Yeah, you look lovely. Really and nice. Well, thank you so much. Um, I'm just going to see whether we've got any more questions. Uh, Sarah, do we have any other questions that have come through? Um, we've just got something about your evening routine, Ruby. Um, so I guess, like, what time do you go to bed at night? <laughs> oh my God, well, I try to get to bed as early as I can and it has been easier in lockdown because we haven't been going out. So, you know, it's been easier to do that. But I know that it's better not to have um, a stop start day or night. It's better to have some sort of routine so that you can calm yourself and put the day down and then focus on your rejuvenation for your skin and your mental health and all of that. Yeah. And I sometimes think people always do their skincare routine last thing at night when they're almost falling asleep on standing up. And I think it's better to do it when you first come in or you, one, you've still got the energy because your hands are clean, you're not going anywhere else, and you can pay attention to that routine. So I suggest doing it then and not doing it, because even when we brush our teeth, we probably brush one side better than the other because you've just done it, but it's not thorough. So you want to do it thorough when you yeah. still have energy. Brilliant. Well, thank you so, so much. This is really great. Thanks to everybody who's been watching. Um, it's been really, really fascinating. Thank you, Ruby and Natalie. Thank you, and thank you Natalie, and thank you, Lisa. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to Sarah Cresswell, who's working behind the camera, and uh, Benjamin Kaufman and Sarah Barnes as well. And um, great, so thank you very much. And we're now going off to do your shoot, um, Ruby. So at the end of um, this, we'd like to do our group hug, which I don't know whether you've seen before, Ruby, but our group hug, oh yeah, you have seen it before is when we do this lovely virtual hug together. And where's Benjamin? Can Benjamin come on? And we're gonna do a big group hug and then that's the end of the show. So thank you very much. Okay, so three, two, one. <laughs>
It's a nice thing to do, isn't it? Okay, great. Well, thank you so much then, guys. And um, Ruby, you're off to get your um, photos taken now. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And thanks, Greg. Gregor. Thank you very much.